Hi again. In this video, we're going to take a look at the sine distance field shader part of TextMesh Pro. Now, in the last video, we looked at the mobile version of the sine distance field shader. So if you didn't have a chance to look at that one, I urge you to go look at that one first, then take a look at this video. So as you can see here, we have the mobile version selected, which offered us the ability to, with features controlling face, outline, and underlay. Now, if we select the sign distance field version of it, the non-mobile version, which is right here, you can see that there's a lot more panels and options to the shader. So let's begin with the face. So similar to the mobile version, we can control the face color, uh, softness, and we can dilate the font itself, as you can see here, but we can also texture the face of the font. So if I zoom in, take a look at this now, um, Right now, I've just got the basic package, so I have a limited selection in terms of textures, but um, let's apply a sort of stainless uh, texture to the face of my font, which you can see here, which is kind of cool. Next, um, let's take a look at the outline. Now, in the outline, same thing, color, thickness. Let's add some thickness here. And you can see that we can also add a texture to the outline. So I'm going to go here and pick something like fruit jelly. Now, since our color is black, we can't see it. So let's push this up to white. And now we can see our texture right here. So now we added a texture with the middle. Now, this uh, demonstration is focused on the shader, not my artistic abilities, which are somewhat limited. So I can operate the tool, but I can't necessarily make cool stuff. As my grandfather used to say, it's not because I give you a hammer and a saw that you can build a house. So I can operate the tools, but I can't, you know, make creative stuff. So anyway, so don't judge me, please. Um, so let's keep on going. So next thing that we've got is uh, we've got our underlay panel, which the mobile version has. This one's identical to it. Let me collapse face and outline. So this one's the same. There's no new features there. And again, underlay can be used to create uh, quickly a simulated shadow as we see here. Uh, let me just go play with it a little bit in case you didn't watch the other video, but I can control where this shadow appears. Now you may have noticed that um, when I move this, let's see here, the geometry that or the quad that the character is in uh, shrinks and grows based on the option. So in order to maximize performance, the quad basically fits the shape of the object itself, which is why as I move this, it grows because we're trying to fit in the underlay and so on and so forth. So I'm just side note to explain what's going on. Anyway, back to underlay. So we had added some softness here. So as you can see, we can create a nice looking uh, text real quick with underlay. Now, next panel. Again, we covered in the last video that some of the panels can be enabled and disabled, and this creates shader variants. Uh, and we're using shader keywords to do that. And what that means simply is when it's disabled, Unity creates a version of the shader that it compiles that does not have underlay in that shader. And then when you enable it, it creates another variant of that shader, which then has that code in it. Well, in the case of the bevel option, uh, the bevel panel uh, is another keyword. Now, in the case of bevel, this one is actually linked with so bevel all these effects that sort of affect lighting per se they're all linked with each other which is why when i enable one or disable one they all go together so underlay is its own keyword bevel lighting bump map env map are together and glow is separate but these guys are all tied in together so let's take a look at the uh, bevel options now, the bevel options themselves require a, a little bit of a fine tuning to get the look you're, you're going for. So you're going to have to experiment with these and, and play with them. I'll just go over what they do, um, but you're going to have to just play around. So the first option uh, that we can pick is inner or outer bevel. Uh, let me add some bevel amount so we can take a look at the inner versus outer. So if I push it sort of to the limit, um, here we can see that we are using an inner bevel. It looks like the inside of the font is flat, whereas this outside area is kind of raised, okay, as you can see. 
So bevel amount controls how much we're getting. So this is inner versus outer. So you can see the outer looks like this part is raised and flat and then it's kind of chiseled on the outside, okay? Let me switch to inner here. Um, offset controls where base, like the edge of the font is about here. If I disable this uh, and if I was to uh, remove the thickness, the offset of the bevel is right on that edge right there, okay? So let me add this again and re-enable bevel. But you can see it's right there. So offset shifts that line outside or inside. So again, it allows you to create different looks. Okay, so I'll leave it at zero. Width controls how wide this is. So it allows me to go inside the font or, out, or inside. So now I can go right there. Okay, um, I'll skip uh, roundness right now. Clamp has the effect of kind of flattening this part. So if I zoom in, and you look more closely, um, here it looks like it's a sharp point, and if I go clamp, it kind of flattens that down. Okay, you can see it better here in that curve. Okay, then roundness, if I go back to sharp, it creates, see how it's looking like a sharp transition here? Roundness makes it look softer and kind of round. So if I play with this, you know, it looks like this edge is kind of round versus a sharp corner, okay? Now let's take a look at lighting. Light angle affects where it appears that the light is coming from. Now, this is the normal distance field as opposed to the surface version of it. So the lighting is simulated by this panel here, okay? So I can control, let me zoom back so you see it a little bit better. So you can control where the lighting appears to be coming from, okay? Now in a previous video, I made a reference to if you're gonna change some of these things via script um, that I said, some of them are interlinked and, and, and basically what we meant by interlinked is you may be expecting a certain result and it would actually behave in a different way. So uh, changing these directly via script is not necessarily recommended unless you know exactly what's going on. So before you start doing that or if you start playing with it and you get a result that's not expected, make sure you post in the form and ask us, you know, hey, what's going on? Um, so specular color. Let's take a look at that. So here I can fake or again tint this color, like add a blue sort of tint to it. Um, so if I move the lighting, you can see here what's going on. Specular power, well, how much of this um, light are we receiving on the object? Reflectivity, how reflective is it? So highly reflective or not too reflective. Then diffuse shadow and ambient shadow. Um, ambient shadow, I'll play with that one first. This one sort of, uh, imagine it's sort of ambient occlusion. See how it darkens and it increase, it makes the bevel look appear way more pronounced, which I like, it's really cool. Uh, and then diffuse shadow, uh, this one, you know, darkens it or adds more shadowy stuff to it. So you get the feel here. So now that I've made that tweak, if we look at our text, see how dramatically different, let me go back to, I'm gonna disable the whole bevel group. This is what it looks like. And once you enable it, look at how different we've made that font look like. Now back to this clamp that I was using. Now with the ambient thing, look how different or how to flatten on the clamp appears. You can really see now that we're flattening this portion right here. Let me go back to a sharp thing. See now it's a sharp transition versus kind of round, okay? Uh, let's take a look at the next panel, bump mapping. Um, so let me expand this one and we'll pick a texture, and I'll pick this one here. So you can control both the 
bump mapping that occurs on the face. So you can see now I'm adding it to the inside or on the face. Or add it on the outline. Now it's kind of bluish. That's because I selected the blue color right here, right? So make it kind of a orangey. Now let's keep going. Uh, da, 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 da. So this controls these. Now and uh, let me collapse it. Environmental map. Uh, this one you have to use a cube map and sadly I guess I forgot to add one to the project but this allows you to add an, a cube map or a spherical map where now you're going to get some reflection of that cube map in the object and you can uh, tilt the axis at which it's coming uh, which is pretty cool. Sorry, don't have uh, one of those textures to show. Now the next part is the glow option. Now glow is on a keyword on its own um, so I'm going to expand the panel for glow and then enable it. So now we can see that by default the glow is again on the edge of where the face of the font is, not you know, where the border is. First option is obviously color. We can change the color of this glow. Let's make it glow sort of a deep orange, red. Uh, you can control the transparency of it, obviously. We'll make it a little bit transparent. Offset controls where the glow is. So I can move it on the inside of the font. I can move it like on the outside right here. So now we have this orange glow outside or kind of a cool, you know, effect on the inside. Well, let's stick to this guy just for fun. Then I can control the inner glow or if I move it in more, the outer part of the glow, okay? Let's actually go right here, add more outer glow. Then power is exactly what it is, power. I can fade the glow completely out and bring it back in. So this shows quickly the sign distance field, the normal version of, uh, of shader that's included with Text Mesh Pro. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post. Thanks for watching.